Hello, this is Abby. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Abby Megumi. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you all about my loft bed. So, I have had this loft bed for a little over a year now, and I have gotten lots of questions on my loft bed. So, I would like to answer those questions and tell you all about what it's like to have a loft bed, the pros and cons of it, and tips on how to have one and use one. So, let's go. So, first, where did I get my loft bed? So I got my loft bed from a Japanese furniture company called Nitori. Um, they have like a wide variety of loft beds for kids and adults. Uh, the loft bed that I got was like a spacious loft bed with stairs instead of the standard ladder. So the cost. The cost of my loft bed was about 44,900 Japanese yen. Or in US dollars, it's about 337 US dollars. So, the loft bed details. And my loft bed comes with um, outlets to charge like your phone or plug in any like lights and everything like that, and a little like space above your pillow to store any kind of like maybe or place any um, like clocks or books or crystals like what I have. And it also comes with storage space underneath the stairs. So the pros of having a loft bed. So the first pro is, well, the obvious thing, space. You get to have more storage space and can place anything underneath a loft bed like a desk or a couch like what I have and still have the rest of your room to decorate. It's really nice for smaller rooms or apartments, especially for me since I live in Tokyo, Japan where apartment spaces are quite small, as well as storage. The second pro of having a loft bed is decorating. Um, for a loft bed, you can decorate it with anything you like. What I have are like little postcards and vines, lights and keychains and everything, and even some like hanging cups to hold anything that I need. And I think it's very beneficial for the loft bed experience, I think. <laughs> I also have LED lights kind of like all over my loft bed um, just in case if I need to use some when I go down the stairs or when it's dark. So the third pro of having a loft bed is the cost. Um, in my opinion, I think the cost is kind of worth it. Um, even if it is like a little expensive, um, the storage space, the decoration, and even like waking up and going to sleep can really help you out, which is actually my next point. Uh, fourth pro of having a loft bed is waking up, getting to sleep, and working. So what I'm trying to kind of say for this pro is that um, you can differentiate your workspace, like your desk or couch, and your relaxing or sleeping space of your bed. Um, since your loft bed is higher up off the ground, you have to use like the stairs or like a ladder to go up there in order to relax. Whereas downstairs <laughs> or you know underneath your loft bed, you have your desk and your couch or um, anything that you have underneath your loft bed that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it really helps like but for me personally, I think it really helps kind of like let my brain know like which section of my room is like my workspace or my relaxing space or my sleeping space. And also using the ladder or stairs to get up or down to go to sleep or wake up I think can really like help your body kind of know and like you know that you're gonna wake up or that you need, uh, you need to go to sleep and also just kind of get your muscle memory working just to like get your body and your brain to know what you're going to be doing, I guess. The next pro is that it's basically for everybody. Um, loft beds or bunk beds aren't always for kids or for college students. They can be for people of all ages, I think. And there are also a wide variety of different kinds of loft beds, which is also my next pro, is that there are a variety of loft beds. Um, they don't just have 
like loft beds like mine with stairs and a very open storage space underneath. You can also have built-in desks, uh, built-in bulletin boards, um, closet spaces even, and drawers. And you can also have bed sizes too, like different kinds of bed sizes. Like it doesn't just have to be like a twin size bed like what I have, you can also have like a full size bed and even like bigger ones. You can have higher uh, leveled loft beds or lower leveled loft beds as well, depending on what you like. Now onto the cons of having a loft bed. So first off, I would like you to take a great big look at my door. See it? Okay. Now could you take a look at my loft bed? So, my handy dandy phone here. Um, <clears throat> as you can tell, the loft bed is much bigger than my door, which means that when you order <clears throat> and get your loft bed shipped, it will be in a much smaller box with all the pieces ready for you to assemble, which means that um, it will be very heavy and there, there will be lots of work to do in order to go to sleep, basically. And if you don't really have like, maybe if you live in an area or if you have a company that can build it for you, if there's like a service that can build it for you, it might cost a little bit um, and it might take up some time of your day in order to build it. So, um, but if you don't really have like a service like that, which I didn't, um, get some friends and family members that are willing to maybe <laughs> get some exercise in, um, a few hours of your day, a few bottles of water and some snacks, and start assembling. So the next con that I have is head injuries, neck and back pain. Um, if you are uh, prone to having neck and back pain, or if you suffer from that, um, or if you uh, do not want <laughs> a bad head injury, or stuff like that, then um, maybe a loft bed night might not really be for you, I think. Because when I first got my loft bed, um, and also my loft bed is made out of metal, um, you know, get a metal loft bed plus not getting used to having a loft bed equals lots of uh, pain in my head because of not knowing that there was metal they're really like inches from my head whenever I work on something or pick something up under my loft bed or even just as simple as sitting. Uh, because of a loft bed, depending on like the size of it, like how high or low it is from the ground, uh, you might have to stand in very uncomfortable or awkward uh, positions when doing something like taking a picture or grabbing something or even like standing up or sitting down at a chair or at a desk, so um, I would actually recommend maybe getting some kind of soft cushion maybe in the first few months of getting a loft bed, if, especially if you have a metal loft bed like what I do, I think, which unfortunately we didn't and we kind of suffered through a good few months of just constant head pain. <laughs> okay, so my final con of having a loft bed is the possible dangers of having a loft bed. So, again, put my um, hand dandy phone to kind of just get all the details in. Um, when you order it and build a loft bed or when someone else is building it for you, make sure that all the pieces are there and are tightly secured and stable because you do not want something or someone to get harmed or injured or hurt with a, an improperly built loft bed. Another thing is research. Make sure to research different loft beds that you want instead of buying the first thing you see and not knowing the measurements for even the maximum weight that a loft bed can hold because it's not just you that's going on there, it's you, the mattress, the bedding, maybe another person or two for a fun movie night or other matters. An extra note, if you live in an area that is prone to earthquakes, be extra careful with what loft bed you buy. Uh, make sure it's from a place that can make sure your loft beds, especially metal ones, that you can like bolt into a wall or place items like poles to further safe in your loft bed experience.
So here are some of my tips on having a loft bed and what to do. First tip that I have is that if you have a loft bed where you, you will be frequently ducking or standing in an uncomfortable position when you're underneath a loft bed for long periods of time, recommend placing like keychains or a soft cushion or something that makes a sound to remind you that you're literally inches away from hitting your head. <laughs> The second tip that I have is to place lamps and lighting under the loft bed, especially if you will be spending lots of time there, like working or studying. Depending on where you set your loft bed, you might not really get enough light because of a liberal bed above you. Um, the third tip that I have is that if it's late at night and you want to make sure you have a safe trip down a loft bed ladder or stairs, I would recommend adding some kind of like glow in the dark tape or some kind of low lighting like LED lights like what I have or some kind of night light nearby to make sure you have a nice and lovely safe trip down or up the ladder or stairs instead of a trip to the ER. And lastly, practice going up and down the ladder or stairs. Um, in the very beginning, it was hard for me to get used to having a loft bed simply because I never really used a loft bed before or even the upper bunk of a bunk bed. So honestly, I think practice just going up and down a loft bed and even practicing just ducking under underneath your loft bed will prevent any possible injuries and also will get your muscle uh, and your muscle memory God, get your muscle memory working well. That is everything that I have for what a loft bed is and the pros and cons of it, and tips and tricks on how to use and have a loft bed. Um, if you have any questions about like anything about you know loft beds or if there is anything that I didn't specify that you were maybe confused about or wondering about, you can ask or comment down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you would like more videos about a loft bed, um, you can comment about that below as well. Um, my next video, I'm planning on maybe doing a room tour where I can kind of put more details on how I decorated my loft bed as well as the rest of my room. So um, yeah, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. This was Abby.